So in, in terms of mechanical nano, um, because it's something really new, and as we go along, it's a bit like it's it's very organic. So sometimes we we see a branch which we're tempted to go along and follow, but we have to try and keep focused on the on the on the core subject of that. So it's, it's very difficult. We've actually always struggling to try and put uh, a sort of timing on it, because when you when you fix not. Uh, just a result to say we need a watch which has three hands, which does this, which has a calendar, etc., etc. So if you, as soon as you break out of the, the uh, the established and the existing uh, world, it becomes very hard to actually put a, a timetable to it. Obviously, you have to keep pushing, and uh, we try and uh, um, we try and work to that. But if you if you make a new kind of discovery in something and then you need to explore that more, then this is a choice. And so a lot of our energy goes back into uh, this R&D side uh, because that's where we feel that the future will, will be able to grow from. We had a first, we had two different kind of demonstrators and we've try, we try to communicate them about them in the sense of our EWT, this laboratory, which is called Experimental Watch uh, uh, Technology. And so that is a kind of, this process is not fixing a specification to say what the watch must do, but leaving it much more open so it can actually evolve and, and grow more organically as we go along. And so we eat at each step. So, um, you know, last time we talked about it was uh, was about maybe even a year, 18 months, because be between then, been working on the intellectual property side, which takes time, and then actually some prototyping, which is not palpable enough to be able to show people. But what we've got to do is we've got to build certain sort of fundamental parts, which mean that we make part uh, partial prototypes. So it's a piece of a mechanism because we need to re answer one question with one formula, with one unknown in it. So each time we do that, it means that there's a lot of different steps, but to be able to communicate about them or, or deliver it as a, as a finished uh, timepiece or watch, or this is, uh, this is much more difficult because it's not something where we can say, okay, we need to make a new case with a new design, a new dial, etc. Uh, which is something you can put a timing uh, and a framework on. So it, for Robert and myself, I think Global Force is really about exclusivity. It's about the mechanical architecture. It's about our vision of watchmaking, which is uh, through innovation technically, but also a kind of artistic approach in terms of the creation and uh, bringing that with a level of hand finishing, which we, we push as far as we can. Well, you know how long it took us with the foundation to get uh, a breakthrough, really? I mean, because it, it, with Time Young, we created it, you know, we created the foundation physically in 2008, beginning of 2008, okay. just at the wrong time. So we oh, almost had a couple of companies who were going to support the project. But of course, you had the financial crisis, which hit just like, just about the time they were going to put their money where they where the intentions were and um, and then after that so then with Robert uh, we thought we must do something Philip was prepared to share his know-how and so uh, we knew Michel Belanger and we thought well this could be a way we perhaps we could find a way to finance one person but it's important that person's then going to go back and share that knowledge whereas if we'd taken a very skilled young watchmaker and he'd just gone and built his own watches we wouldn't have being able to reach out and spread that knowledge. So so from 2012 in SIHH, when we had it as part of our booth, what we didn't really realize was we were talking about it, we were showcasing it, Philippe came along with Michelle, and then we had people from our team here showing different techniques. And uh, it took four years until the watch was actually ticking for people to sort of say, oh yeah, I kind of get where you want to go with this foundation idea, it's kind of important. Because what they actually then confessed was that they felt that we just used it as a marketing tool for Global Forcey <laughs> for those first kind of three years, you know. So, so it is a it's an interesting thing. So with Time Ian Foundation, so Naissance d'une Montre was to then build uh, eleven examples of that watch, 
practicing those different techniques. Couldn't always do all the techniques for all the pieces of every watch, because depending on the skill with watchmakers, some of uh, whom are in our team. And what we realized was the first ones took so long for Michel that he would have lost his teaching job and he'd still be working for the next like five years or from now uh, building them. So, so we were able to spread that. Michel's gone back to teaching in Paris and he's actually spreading that knowledge and um, even if it's not part of the curriculum, he can actually teach saying, I tried this way, I tried this way, if you want to make a part like this. So you can actually, it's actually uh, bringing something, which is great. And then since then, so we've got uh, uh, we've got new projects, Naissance du Montre in the series idea, but each time it's to take different skills. And so it's to, there's, because watchmaking is so wide, there's, there's enough for, for years and, and decades of uh, trying to safeguard different, science, different areas of know-how. So we've got a project which will, uh, which be uh, finally shown the, the finished result of that, Naissance du Montre 2, which uh, will be this springtime, 2020. And then uh, Naissance du Montre 3, we already mentioned that there's a, <clears throat> a collaboration, a uh, future collaboration coming along, but that's at a very early stage. So again, there's so much to do up front and invisibly, so that you can then kind of talk about that and, and share that know, that uh, information in a more kind of structured way for the for the watch collecting and uh, and wider audience. So so each time it's to try and partner with somebody who's got a particular know-how and to say, well, we want to preserve that know-how. Let's do a project there and we can safeguard and uh, and then we can try and transmit that. Not trying to overturn the the state uh, funded teaching of watchmaking. But so we can add to that so that a few people from there will will continue to maintain a kind of a nucleus of uh, this know-how of traditional watchmaking, traditional skills and crafts, and to be able to perpetuate them to a new generation. Mm -hmm.